Welcome back. Today, we will discuss managing hypertension in the very elderly or those over 80 years old. In the past, treatment of blood pressure in the very elderly was controversial. This subgroup of patients is usually excluded from clinical trials and the data available to demonstrate treatment benefits were limited and inconclusive. Furthermore, the benefits of antihypertensive therapy could be potentially offset by complications of treatment, which are perceived as occurring more often in the elderly. These complications include dementia, orthostatic hypotension, heart failure, and electrolyte abnormalities. A recent evaluation of the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey database revealed that nearly 50% of hypertensive U.S. adults older than 80 years old of age have uncontrolled hypertension. Treatment of elevated blood pressure in older adults to guideline recommended systolic blood pressure goal of less than 130 mmHg is challenging due to the increased risk of medication side effects and drug-drug interactions. Antihypertensive agents like immediate-release nifedipine and peripheral alpha-1 antagonists like toxazosine, prazosine, and terazosine are associated with a heightened risk of orthostatic hypotension, while central alpha-2 agonists like clonidine, guanfacine, and methyldopa can lead to significant central nervous system side effects in older adults. Concomitant use of peripheral alpha-1 antagonists with loop diuretics in older women increases the risk of urinary incontinence. Renin angiotensin system antagonists like angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, angiotin receptor blockers, or aliskiren, and potassium sparing diuretics like amyloride or triamterene can lead to an increased risk of hyperkalemia. However, when used with caution, the three first line agents for hypertension management, including diuretics, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, and calcium channel blockers, have excellent safety profiles and are generally well tolerated by older adults. A high degree of heterogeneity in clinical comorbidities, cognitive impairment, and variable life expectancy further add to the complexity of hypertension management in this patient population. Among older patients with multiple clinical comorbidities, high frailty or advanced cognitive impairment an accurate assessment of prognosis, risk tolerance, and treatment goals is of paramount importance. Additionally, older patients may develop orthostatic hypotension with initiation of multiple antihypertensive agents. Careful initiation of a single agent followed by sequential titration of the dose and addition of other agents can decrease the risk of adverse outcomes with intensive blood pressure lowering. Along these lines, the 2017 American College of Cardiology slash American Heart Association Blood Pressure Guideline recommends that for older adults, those over 65 years of age with hypertension and high burden of comorbidity and limited life expectancy, clinical judgment, patient preference, and a team-based approach to assess risk-benefit ratio is reasonable for decisions regarding intensity of blood pressure lowering and choice of antihypertensive drugs. This clinical uncertainty with regards to relative benefits and risks associated with antihypertensive therapy in patients over 80 years old was addressed by the hypertension in the very elderly trial, or HIVET. HIVET enrolled 3,845 hypertensive patients who were over 80 years old with a baseline systolic blood pressure greater than 160 mmHg and randomized them to receive indapamide or placebo. Perindopril or placebo was added on later if the blood pressure was still above goal, which was less than 150 over 80 mmHg. The results show 
that active treatment was associated with a 30% reduction in fatal or non-fatal stroke, a 39% reduction in stroke deaths, a 21% decrease in all-cause mortality, and a 23% decline in cardiovascular death after a median follow-up of 1.8 years. Furthermore, there was also a 64% reduction of heart failure. This was achieved without an excess of adverse events in the active treatment group compared to placebo. The incidence of potassium abnormalities or increase in serum creatinine, uric acid, or glucose was similar in the active and placebo treatment groups. Orthostatic hypotension occurred in 12% of study participants in the pilot trial, but the authors counter that this higher than expected number could be due to selection bias as those with systolic blood pressure over 140 mm mercury were excluded from the analysis. This trial gave conclusive evidence that even in the very elderly, older than 80 years old, treatment of hypertension reduces cardiovascular risk significantly. However, one caveat is that HIVET excluded nursing home residents, patients with dementia, and those with kidney disease or heart failure, which comprise a significant subset in this age group. Hence, these results may not be generalizable to all elderly patients over 80 years of age. We will now discuss therapeutic strategies in the very elderly. With regards to non-pharmacological intervention for lowering blood pressure, although benefits have been shown in younger populations, there is little evidence from controlled studies in hypertensive patients aged 80 plus. Some of the proposed lifestyle changes, including weight reduction, dietary approach to stop hypertension, Mediterranean diet, dietary sodium reduction, physical activity, and moderate alcohol consumption may, however, not be appropriate or relevant and may even be detrimental. Thus, a weight reduction in patients greater than 80 years old easily induces a loss of muscle mass or sarcopenia and can even cause cachexia unless an intensive physical training program and adequate protein supplementation are concomitantly applied. Equally, an excessive salt reduction might induce hyponatremia, malnutrition, and orthostatic hypotension with increased risk of falls. Physical activity adapted to the functional capacities of the older person and to his or her preferences is of major importance, even if not meeting the amount recommended by current guidelines, which is similar for older and younger adult subjects. Finally, excessive alcohol intake should be discouraged not only because of its pressure effect, but also mainly because of increased risk of falls and confusion. In older individuals, in which polypharmacy, including antihypertensive agents, is a frequent phenomenon, drug-related problems are directly correlated with the number of drugs, and therefore, starting with monotherapy should be the rule. Most international guidelines propose the same five antihypertensive drug classes as for younger subjects. They include thiazide diuretics, calcium channel blockers, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, angiotensin receptor blockers, and beta blockers. The American guidelines on antihypertensive treatment in patients older than 60 years old list the adverse effect of drug classes but does not specifically advocate a particular drug class. The British National Institute for Healthcare Excellence or NICE guidelines do not include beta blocker as a first line treatment in older adults. The European guidelines mostly favors a calcium channel blocker or a thiazide diuretic in the absence of a compelling disease-specific indication, in addition to lifestyle change recommendations when the latter is insufficient to achieve blood pressure control. Furthermore, it was recently proposed that in patients 
older than 80 years of age, angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors should be among the first-line medications because this represents one of the two drug classes used in the HIBET trial. However, the findings of some clinical studies argue against the use of angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors as the first choice in older adults and propose instead replacing them with angiotensin receptor blockers. It is important to regularly check for all potential clinical and biological side effects and the impact of this treatment on the functional status and quality of life of the older patients. Table 1 shows the most frequent adverse effects of these drugs and the precautions to be considered in older adults. However, we should always bear in mind that in this population, medication-induced side effects are more frequent, more severe, and less specific than in younger adults. Hence, all antihypertensive drugs can be responsible for certain common clinical manifestations and conditions such as fatigue, confusion, delirium, or the static hypotension, and falls. You can download the complete table in PDF format from our website on https phcpdonline.com. You need to register first. We will just discuss a few of the drugs and their side effects. Refer to the PDF file for more detailed information and precautions on older adults. First, our calcium channel blockers, both dihydropyridine and non-dihydropyridine. Side effects include signs related to sympathetic activation, like flushing, headache, and tachycardia, lower limb edema, bradycardia, AV block, worsening heart failure, constipation, especially verapamil, fatigue, and dyspnea. Second are diuretics, both thiazide and loop diuretics. Side effects include hyponatremia, hypokalemia, hyperuricemia, and gout attacks, hypotension, and dehydration. Third are angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors. Side effects include dry cough, hyperkalemia, rash, angioedema, dizziness, fatigue, and acute renal failure. Fourth are angiotensin receptor blockers. Side effects include hyperkalemia, rash, dizziness, fatigue, and acute renal failure. Five are beta blockers. Side effects include bradycardia, cardiac decompensation, peripheral vasoconstriction, bronchospasm, fatigue, depression, dizziness, confusion, and hypoglycemia. Six are aldosterone antagonists. Side effects include hyperkalemia, hyponatremia, and gastrointestinal disturbances like cramps and diarrhea, and gynecomastia. Seventh are alpha blockers. Side effects include dizziness, fatigue, nausea, urinary incontinence, orthostatic hypotension, and syncope. And lastly are central alpha agonists. Side effects include drowsiness, dry mouth, dizziness, constipation, depression, anxiety, fatigue, urinary retention or incontinence, orthostatic hypotension, confusion, and delirium. A combination antihypertensive therapy to control blood pressure should be considered in the course of treatment only if the indication seems relevant after a judicious risk-benefit ratio assessment. A third drug can be added if necessary after a new medication review to avoid drug-related side effects. Moreover, great care must be taken if more than three antihypertensive drugs are combined in individuals aged over 80 years. This ends our discussion on management of hypertension for the very elderly. See you next time when we summarize what we have learned in this lecture.